When Hawk and I heard when Sting and uh, the Ultra Warrior were down in uh, UWF, down from Bill Watts' promotion down in Louisiana, we heard about these guys wearing face paint and they're kind of copying the Road Warrior moves, at least trying anyway, because often imitated, never duplicated. It's our gimmick, right? So then uh, Jim Crockett came to me so one day, and that's where the Ultimate Warrior, or at the time, Ding Dingle Warrior, actually ended up going to WWF. And uh, where do you think the Ultimate Warrior got the press land and dropped people behind him from? Duh, me, you know, <laughs> I did it all the time. But Sting, was sitting there in limbo and Jim Crockett came to him and said, hey man, there's this blonde haired guy that used to be part of his tag team down in Louisiana. He goes, we don't know what to do with him. He goes, he wears face paint. He says, Animal, if you guys don't want him, he goes, I won't bring him in. And I said, you know what? I like what the kid does. I say that to kid and Sting's two years older than I am. I said, I like what the guy does. He goes, let's bring him in and hawk a mile and make him brothers in paint. Let's get him over, let him get over, which he did. He became one of the iconic characters in wrestling. And uh, as soon as he took off with Ric Flair, then Sting started taking off on his own. But that's how Sting got his foothold in the NWA. So uh, when guys wear face paint in this business, man, we're, we're not the first ones, we're not going to be the last. The, the whole thing with having the proper kind of face paint is the attitude behind it and what you can do to back it up. That's the difference. If you can back it up, you'll do all right.